Gotcha. Just a little, a little fake out there. It's hard to watch. It hasn't been pretty, Dizzle. Has not been pretty the last however many, you know, just today was pretty bad. Get get all these things on here. Give me one second. Ian, it is ho today. Hello. Aggie, hello. Skull. Accent we need, Darren McCacken. You've never been you've you've never you've never been wrong before. So just want you to know that. I'm very, very happy. That you've mentioned that we need Darren McCacken. Darren McCacken, is he going three and a third, giving up eight earned on 11 hits? I don't know. And we'll never know. We'll, we'll never give be given that opportunity. Nolan, hello. Ian, obviously, hello. Aggie, what's good? Lucario, what happened in the game today? Uh, shenanigans? Shenanigans? Not good shenanigans either. Obviously, Emerson Hancock got tatered. William Contreras just knows how to hit a baseball. Bro is, he's crazy. William Contreras did the most damage today. It was just bad. Four hits in his five at-bats. Two homers, five RBI. William Contreras cannot and will not, was not stopped this series. He was just smoking the ball. All around. The offense, you know, we started off hot a little bit. Scored one in the first. Jorge Polanco seems like he's, like, maybe heating up a little. Like, he's starting to get some, I, th I guess, BAPIP luck. But, yeah, Hancock was not... Didn't get the job done. Like I said last week, I felt like Hancock, in his, in his first start, he did his job. He kept us in the game. That did not happen. Obviously, Hancock start, we won. The team won against the Guardians. That did not happen in this situation. So, I don't really want to talk about the game that much because realistically, it was ugly from start to finish and it just wasn't wasn't a vibe. Three runs in the first inning for the Brewers. Three runs in the second inning from the Brewers. We were down 6-2 to two at that point. And then a four spot in the four. So it was just, you know, all bad. Josh Rojas was able to pitch again, gave up two earned. So Rojas being our, you know, fifth best pitcher is done and over with. And it's still possible. It's still possible. But, you know, Dom Canzone had another, he had another home run. The team leader in home runs, by the way, with two. So good for Dom. Josh Rojas had some hits today to himself. Dylan Moore staying, you know, relatively hot after a pretty solid start to the year. It was Mitch Hanniger's first day off, which I think was long overdue. Maybe not long overdue, but just I'm happy that it happened. You know, crappy way to end the series against the Brewers. You know, we are now four and six heading into Toronto, but just got to turn a new leaf. Hopefully, you know, things are looking better in there. It's Hancock, bro. What did y'all expect? Not. 11 hits on 8 earned in 3 and a third. Truthfully, Skull. Truthfully. Not celebrating a Dom Can Zone garbage time home run. He cuts the lead to 42. Yeah, I know. It's, you know. You can say that, like, may maybe not celebrating it's the right way. He get a homer. Nice. Very, very nice. The ass hats are 2 and 7. Still early. The Astros, they're playing the Rangers again. Obviously, it'll finish up their series there, I think. But, yeah, the Astros still slugging behind as well. At least we have each other. That's true, Nolan. That's true. That is true. Love this team. Think we'll be fine, but I'm still sad this Sunday. Yeah, it's definitely not, not great. Josh, hello. Hello, hello. Sorry about the loss. It is okay. Keep the good vibes rolling for you guys and the Rangers against the Astros, please. Thank you. God forbid we think a homer is cool. How dare we? How dare we? No, it's garbage time. Like, you know, we're we're down twelve to two, and a and a homer happens. Don't call it a comeback. You know, those are the those are the kind of vibes. Those are the kind of vibes. Upcoming series is Battle of the Mid. Blue Jays are thirtieth in WRC plus. Don't let them know, Accent. Don't let them know. Yeah, I mean, the pitching matchups ahead are what? Barrios, Castillo, Bassett, 
Kirby and is it you say against Gilbert? Is that what it is? CM Punk, CM Punk. Yeah, dude, how's WrestleMania going? Is it good right now? When will Julio hit a dinger, bro? I, I, I wish I could tell you. I said sometime last week. Like, someone asked me like, how many players are gonna hit a home run before Julio does? We're well past the number that I said. I was like, oh, probably like two more. Well past. Hypothetically, we win all three pitching matchups. Just still don't trust the pen. Colin Snyder. Had a, a rough outing. Also took a ball to the knee. Not great. I expect some sort of roster move as far as the bullpen is concerned. Like, I, I realistically think something's probably coming in the next, like, 24 hours. Whether it's Hancock getting optioned and, like, bringing up a veteran number five more. So, like, Jonathan Diaz. Dallas Keiko looked fine today in his in Rainier's debut. So, I have no idea. We'll talk about that probably on the pod at some point be for tomorrow but it is you say yeah so yeah castillo brios kirby bassett gilbert you say i like the odds there and the, like we said the blue jays offense has been pretty anemic as well so you know hopefully they don't wake up against the mariners pitching you lied how dare you i dare you snyder used to be a higher leverage pitcher like you until he took a liner to the knee. See, thank you, Dorian. I I appreciate I appreciate that. Thank you. I was that's kind of what I was going for. I just didn't really want to say it, but in your twenty four in your twenty four the show franchise, I was like, why did I say it like that? Twenty four the show, the show twenty four. There was one year where they flipped the nut. No, whatever, it doesn't matter. They're eight and two. Well, Scav, can you send some good vibes our way, please? From your from your franchise, we're gonna need it. Jays don't have Swanson or Romano still. Yeah, the bullpen for the Jays is... I mean, pitching for the Jays just hasn't also been exceptional. I'd, like, they've they've had a slow-ish start to the year for themselves pitching-wise as well. Not as... Like, Castillo, obviously, has looked shaky. If he gets right, I mean, he pitched well in the wild card game in Toronto. Maybe that's... Maybe he'll feel comfortable there. He'll, he'll remember what it was like in wild card game one. In Toronto. No, we'll see. We'll see. The Rangers put the put Wyatt Langford on the trade block in your franchise? Yo, did you swoop him up or what, dude? Did you swoop him up? So yeah, I don't like the game today, bad. I don't really care to talk about it. Much more beyond that. There's there's way better things going on in the Mariners organization baseball wise than the game today. Like, the Modesto Nuts, guys. The Modesto Nuts are going crazy right now. Reverse reverse the scoreline today, basically, for the Mariners. You're getting the Modesto Nuts scoreline. They've put up 11 on Stockton today. Homers from a bunch of guys down there in the minors. On that Modesto team, a bunch of fun. Johnny Farmello, Colt Emerson, Aiden Smith, Luis Suispel, Lazaro Montes. Like, the boys down in single A, they're a lot of fun. I said, I, I implore, if you have the ability to, I implore you to go watch a Modesto Nuts game at some point. <laughs> Who are the Nuts? Aren't they some MLB team? What do you mean single A? They, sh I mean, put, put this Modesto Nuts team, let's play, let's have an exhibition game between the Nuts and the Mariners right now. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I think the I think the nuts have a chance. I'm kidding, but watch some watch some Mariners minor league baseball. There's a lot of fun guys throughout the minors. My favorite team is obviously the Modesto Nuts. Just the the prospects there are sick, just absolutely sick out of their mind. And I I hope that they continue to dominate. Colt Emerson, if he's gonna continue to stay hot as he is, he's not gonna be in Modesto for very long, but. They have a great chance against the A's. There you go, Ian. It's possible. When are we going to be able to be pissed about this team without the intellectuals of the fan base saying it's early? We shouldn't be complaining. I mean, I feel like, you know, feel free to complain about it now and, like, understand that, like, not everyone's going to agree with you. You know what I mean? Like, do I... 
think that it's early? Yes. Do I also hate watching this baseball team? Sometimes. And specifically today was really bad. Yeah. Like, it is what it is. But... Eight you know, hitting the ball 110 plus miles an hour. It's insanity. True. True. Can Samad Taylor play third base? I don't know if he's actually ever played third professionally. I think he's more of middle infield outfield, unfortunately. Put Joe in the bullpen, Scav? I don't think so. I topped out at like 68, maybe 71. If I'm like really doing big pull downs, I don't know if they need me out there. Say no to gas with all the, with all the, you know, Tommy John, all the UCLs going around, but maybe not me. The team is really cursed. If we're cursed with a four and six start with how bad the team is playing, like what is our run differential right now? It's got to be just horrendous. If we're four and six with a run differential where we're at, I think it's, I mean, it's got to be like, Minus what, like 25 at this point? I, I'll be okay, because realistically, and you know, we, we say this, realistically, things should balance out. Things should kind of put itself in order. Where are we at? Where are we at here? Minus 21, yikes. Gonna go watch Mania. Have a good stream. That's okay, bro. You enjoy WrestleMania. Hopefully, it's everything that you want and more because you're gonna need some some serotonin boost after the game that the Mariners put up today. But feels worse. A game like today or a game where they lose because they couldn't get one clutch hit. You say the latter? Oh, yeah. Game one feels worse to lose. I'd rather watch like game one of the series, though, than watch a game like today. If that makes sense. I'd rather watch the the close loss and like feel gutted about it than w pay any attention to the 12-4 to 4 loss today. So, the Oakland Bees at this point? Tough. <laughs> Tough. I mean, should it be the nameless Bees at that rate since they're going to be the nameless A's going forward once they head to Sacramento? Tommy John injured in our league or sad Beaver Strider. Yeah, no, it's just, it's not fun. And I understand that like, you know, the, the push for velocity is just going to continue to happen because, you know, Velo is, Velo is king, helps you win, helps you be better than everybody else. But at what rate are we like, when are we going to, you know, pump the brakes and be like, okay, let's try and figure out how to not have our pitcher best pitchers some of the best in the league have their elbows completely explode like every every so like every couple of years why wasn't ty france in the game today that could be a part of the problem with the offense it's just like it's been a little power sapped it happens but f why are we saying f did the stream die did I die? Pog? Do I have a chance to win any games in Toronto? Yes, Tyler. I think we have plenty of chance to win in to win in Toronto. Are we back? We're back. We're so back. It was spinning? Whoa. I need to, I need to pay attention to my bit rate. I I don't know what's happened in the last couple of streams. I'm like, I'm right now I'm chilling at like 8% CPU usage. 4,000 bit rate, chilling, nothing's wrong on my end. And then randomly it'll just drop down to like 800. So I need to pay attention. Hello, Daniel. Hello, hello. We back? Yeah, guys, just hit a, hit a quick little refresh for the boys. Not that mad because it was a Hancock start. Yeah, I mean, if this was, I mean, this is, this is like the George Kirby start against the Guardians. Like, that's when we're like really mad because it's like, okay, we expect George Kirby to be, you know, a bit better than that line that he gave up. And Emerson Hancock, sure. Do we think? Do I think he's better than three and a third, eight hits or eight earned eleven hits? Yes, but it's just not gonna. Wasn't gonna happen today. And so, what comes next if we're waiting on Brian Wu? Do we call up a veteran from Tacoma to make a start instead? Well, we will see. Manfred is to blame for all the TJs. I mean, I don't think he's doing anything to help prevent them. 
So technically, you're probably not wrong fully, but... Yeah, Tyler, dude, you, we've been sweating out fantasy. Absolutely sweating it out, dude. It's been crazy. Like, it all it's going to come down to Marcus Semyon, Adolis Garcia, and Jordan Alvarez. And then I guess, yeah, you have Josh Hader, too, like you're saying. Yeah, it'll be five-point difference right now. I'm winning. Be close. We lost because we didn't have Kurt Casale on the team. Yo, user is that that's the hill that you're dying on. Kurt Casale, your ride or die. If you want to play Zavala, do you think it'd be a better idea to call up Jonathan Class A at this point? Um, I mean, Savala really hasn't been very productive offensively, and then in the games that he's been catching, I don't know if it's like his game calling or what, but the Mariners just been getting shelled. So I don't know if there's fully like a way to kind of causality that one but yeah not not great from Sevi. i wouldn't be surprised i don't think it'll be class a but i wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the month things haven't really started clicking with savala defensively behind the plate and far as like game calling wise like i wouldn't be surprised if he's gone you're the daydar of kirk casali now true kirk casali enjoyer Semi and Elbombe both have huge games. I'll go with Semi and Josh, not uh, Adalus. I'm good, though. Don't want Adalus to have a good game because he is against me in fantasy. But we love Kurt Casale. There you go. There you go. Baseball players would benefit from a shorter season. See, I think like if there was going to be a big change to the scheduling... Like a 100, what do, you, what do we think? Like 120 games? Like cut off the first month and a half? Go to like 120 games? Or are we thinking like cut off 30 games? Go like 132? I don't necessarily disagree with the idea that shortening the season would help against prevent injuries and like the season get warmer. Just like warmer weather in general. Because the colder, you know, people talk about the cold weather causing injuries or making your body not as right. It's harder to get warmed up, harder to keep it loose. But I think that'd be a, it'd be a hard thing to swing for like the players association and stuff like that because they'd get less money. And, you know, and TV, like TV deals and like the owners would get less money. So don't change the season. That's dumb. It's like, yes and no. Like I understand why people would want to for the quality of the game and just pre injury preventative measures. But swinging it as far as money is concerned would be impossible. So, yeah. Pretty sure they can figure out who is good and who isn't in a 120-game season? Yes. More than likely, you'd still find, you know, a lot of the same... Like, the teams that are good will be good at 120 games versus 162. So, got a four-point lead? Uh-oh. It's close, Tyler. It's close. Zaria, what's good? Popping in to point out that Josh Ross is one inning away from being our fourth most important reliever. Oh, God. Oh, God. The Josh Rojas. The agenda. It's being pushed. Dried Kelp asked, who do we need to call up? I mean, at this point, I think it's... You're looking at the pitching side of things in the bullpen. Because, like, Colin Snyder's... I mean, depending on how his knee is feeling after getting hit by a line drive. You know. So, Tyson Miller's a probably an easy sh name to kind of throw out there to get called up. And then either Jonathan Diaz or Dallas Keuchel to maybe see if, if they want to give Emerson Hancock one more chance, maybe even Levi Stout, you know, send Hancock down, call one of those three guys to take a start before Wu comes back. I would assume Wu is maybe not close, but you know, another start or two away. Um, there was an update from, oh God, about Brash and Santos and everybody from Jude yesterday. This was on, oh, this wasn't yesterday. This was on the first. So it was a, it's, it's, it's a bit outdated, but like Brash is throwing a bullpen. Like he's progressing how they expected. Same thing with Santos and Bizardo. And so if you're... Worried about the marriage bullpen, which I think is a lot of people, because there are certain points in that bullpen where you really do not feel comfortable. Going to Trent Thornton in yesterday's game, I was like, oh boy, here we go. 
with you know it was a it was a, a weird shaky situation in that eighth inning um you'd like santos or brash but yeah the entire draft did uh-oh yeah i mean a pretty safe draft to kind of be like well that one's kind of messed up but kind of messed up clean first inning only 16 pitches one walk good luck good luck josh i'm sure i mean the last couple of games for astros and rangers have not been they haven't been close right like rangers blew out yesterday Am I am I false in that? That was on it was on Friday where they went ten to two. Anyways, if MLB was treated like a real job, perform well or get fired and get paid. I mean, I think the players care, John. I I think it would be silly to assume that they do not care unless their name is Anthony Rendon and have publicly said like I don't care as much. Um, saying the quiet part out loud of like what comes first and obviously like family, faith, whatever comes first, but I, I would say that they care and certain guys do get sent up or sent down or fired. It is just, it's a bit more, I guess, lenient because you have 162 games to kind of set, you know, set yourself right. But Keiko will save us. Number five starter. He'll channel his Cy Young pass like the Avatar. He's gonna <laughs> he's gonna astral project back to his Cy Young self. That's like a decade old at this point, and be a Cy Young pitcher again. I'm in. I mean, again, if it's anything better than three and a third, eleven hits, eight earned, I'll take it. Because Hancock didn't have it. Keiko is still bad, folks. Correct. But is he three and a third, eleven hits, eight earned? Bad is my question. Accent possibly so you know we'll, we'll see micah digging the arcanine profile picture by the way it's dope i don't know if it's changed or if i just now noticed it but that's sick polanco's finally getting hot i hope so i think it's something where like you know his batted ball is starting to land in whereas before he was kind of getting a little unlucky thoughts of more playing pretty good i mean healthy dylan Moore. i think this is what we kind of knew was possible when he was when he put stuff together but last year his what was his oblique was hurt he was injured and just kind of like nagging him all year it seems like now that he's healthy obviously Dillmore's playing pretty good being pretty solid you know went one for four today nothing crazy but definitely better than some of the other guys on the team right now Aiden Smith Homer again dude the Modesto nuts are going nuts right now going crazy Julio and JP really need to get better. It's just been, you know, slow moving sales for Julio and JP to start. Yesterday, the offense looked like pretty solid, you know, stringing some hits together. Just today didn't seem like you had as much of a chance, given the fact that the pitching just was not keeping you in it. Reason why Keiko hasn't signed until this week? Yeah, I mean, fair enough. I am just a bit, I, I am kind of hanging on the edge of copium by saying Dallas Keuchel will save us or Jonathan Diaz will save us. I don't think either of them have the potential to be better than Emerson Hancock, but if they can throw together a random Tommy Malone start of five innings with no earned, I'm in. I'm in. Hanger isn't getting enough recognition. I mean, finally got a day off, well-earned day off for Mitch Hanniger. He's Playing pretty well offensively. Defense has been a little suspect, but we know we we know he's not there to play defense or you know be great defensively. Hanniger's the fact that he's getting a day off his first one after ten games, so he played nine games in a row. That bodes well for the Mariners and his potential health. Hopefully, it stays that way. Canzone did good today. Canzone had a solid day. Garbage time home run, nonetheless, hit the ball. Pretty solid. Need Wu, Brash, and Santo. Yeah, I mean, once the pitching's at full strength, you'll feel a lot better about the team. It's just, until then, trying to scrap together wins, trying to keep things together, it's like, 
we'll see. You're hoping that the offense can play better. They put up four today. You know, in in most games this season, that would have been keeping it close. Obviously, twelve runs is an outlier to give up, but. First call would be Stout over pretty much any of the career minor leaguers. They don't, th- yeah. I think Stout is probably one that they'd be willing to give a shot to first, just because, like, why not? You know, see what he's got. If he does better than Hancock, great. If he doesn't, you knew what was going to happen because you saw what happened to Hancock. So, is Snyder going to be okay? I haven't heard anything yet. Obviously, taking a line drive off of your legs, not great. Need the core four to be pit, to pitch better than they are. I mean, hopefully this Blue Jays series shows a little bit of reg- you know coming back to a center of Luis Castillo going out and keeping you competitive in a ball game, and George Kirby not having a blow up start, and Logan Gilbert kind of doing the same thing. I think his start against the Brewers, obviously a lot of solo home runs, not great. If he can keep the ball in the yard. I think, you know, there's there's a good chance that all three of these next starts go better than the previous ones that they just made. Blanco still hasn't allowed a hit. He What's the record for most innings pitched to start a year without giving up a hit? Most innings pitched to start a year without giving up a hit. Oral Hershiser. That is not correct, because that didn't start the year, but, wow, 59 consecutive, uh, scoreless. We don't got hitless just, like, off the dome here, Google? Shame. Shame. Snyder has a bruised knee. They'll bring another relief pitcher on the taxi squad to Toronto. You think Tyson Miller, Ian? I feel like Tyson Miller's the answer there. Sauce had a good outing from the bullpen today. Good for sauce. Good for sauce. Some of these overreactions starting pitching in bullpen real problems or overreactions. I think there are things to take away from any of the bad outings that you can use to be like to, to justify some, I guess, like feelings about them. Castillo's command of the outside corners has not been good. So I wouldn't call that an overreaction. I would say that's just stating something that's happened, Cruz. For George Kirby, I think it was a lot of bad defense and like not being able to pitch out of a jam. Um, Logan Gilbert, starting against the Brewers, like pitching to too much contact maybe or like letting his secondary stuff hang out in too much in the middle of the plate, allowing the solo home runs to kind of get to him. But And then the bullpen, like Andres Munoz walking a bunch of guys in that first loss against the Brewers is not great. Second outing in game two locking it down was a great bounce back but not having the command a a couple relievers just not having good command is obviously not a good thing whether that's an overreaction of okay like the bullpen's chalked i don't think a lot of people are saying that but people will latch on to certain things like that like gabe spire walking a lefty was not exactly how scott drew up that bullpen usage by any means so and austin both i mean that just was a bad outing but I understand, like, the, the overreaction sentiment, but there are, th- there are things to take away from each of them that can be used as conversations that don't necessarily have to be overreactions. Vargas? Vargas could be a good shout. Could be a good shout. Samad's been pretty good. I mean, Samad is a guy that is like a spark plug. He's, the, you know, the Sam Haggerty, the Dylan Moore, where it's, like, comes in and just causes chaos and put you in situations to either score runs to win a ball game or bring you back into a ball game. So how long until you think this team will come together more cohesively? Brandon, I sure as hell hope we don't have to wait much longer than tomorrow because inconsistent baseball is one of the most frustrating things to watch because you know they're capable of putting it together. It'll be like one hit, like two hits in a row, and then like bad at bats for the next guys. And then the next time the lineup turns over, those guys that add the bad at bats are not having a good at bat, but the guy like it's just the inconsistency has been frustrating. But I I really I really hope you don't have to, we don't have to wait much longer than either the end of this road trip or at least you know by the time they get back into T Mobile on Friday against the Cubs, please for the love of God, Julio have hopefully hit a home run, please, I'm begging. 
Thoughts on Rojas so far? Hitting the ball well. Playing not great defense at third. I would have much preferred him to stay at second after he put up pretty solid defensive stuff over there at second at the end of the year. But, of course, Jorge Polanco's there, so what can you do? I enjoy watching Josh Rojas hit baseballs, though. It's pretty pretty fun. Pretty fun. Dunning hitting the foot. Rut row, Josh. Rut row. Would be nice if you heard of the players doing some kind of players only meeting. I mm, I think if anything, user error, it'll be if it continues like poor play, like we come back into Seattle and they're five and eight. May or you know, if they only win one out of the next three against Toronto, I would expect a players only meeting or something to happen when they get back to Seattle on Thursday. Since they have an off day, that would be my guess. Lefty batter from the NL Central, Brendan Donovan. Does Scott Service have a job in June if this doesn't vastly improve? By June? I would probably give him till July. If the, if, uh, it, dep- it really depends. Like, vastly improve? So, like, by June, how many games have you played by June? Like, 60? They're 4 and 6, so they're, you know, they'd be, what is that, like 20 and 30? Say they're 20 and 30, 10 games under 500. Is Scott Service getting the axe? I don't think so. I think you'd have to be like 15 games under 500 by like July or something like that. And then it'd be, it could be a conversation. But they're not firing a manager midseason. I think there's a, there's a possibility for it, but it doesn't seem like something that they'd do. Just based on like the personnel, it seems like something they'd wait to do until the off season. But Zara Mentes equals Jordan Alvarez. Hopefully, he's better than Jordan Alvarez. Tall order, you know, tough, tough shoes to fill. But Lazaro's looking. He's looking like a very, very promising hitter. The Mariners and Rangers do play each other. I think it's late in April. Feeling Garver's gonna hit two runs, two home runs. For us against your Texas Rangers, Josh, I sure as hell hope so. Like to see some Mitch Garver bombs at some point. Be be an exciting thing to see happen. Our offense in general just hitting a home run would be pretty sick. Yogi Berra get fired midseason? I couldn't tell you. Plenty of managers have been fired midseason. Some have been fired like within the first month. Lazar could be Jordan, or he could be Joey Gallo. You know, peak Joey Gallo wasn't that bad. Peak Joey Gallo was pretty solid. I don't know if he's got the defensive... Does he have the defensive potential to be Joey Gallo? I think offensively, I, I get what you're saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down, Ian. Laz only a month older than you, and bro's out here. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, I... I... Skull, as a 26-year-old baseball fan, it is weird to see. It is a, it's definitely a strange like shift mentally when the player base is now younger than you. Because like growing up, like we were like, oh, like, you know, like the guys that are around my age or whatever, like, oh, it's like super cool, like blah blah blah. Like they're doing so well. Now that I'm older than them, it's like, whoa. It's kind of weird. Kind of weird. Does not have the defense yet, at least. I mean, well, he's going to be on his way. There's one thing I think about Lazaro Montez is that he seems like he's got a motor for work. Dude will put in the work to try and be the best player that he can. Not say that other players don't do that. I just think I, I maybe I'm holding him to a, a higher standard. But that just seems like the kind of player or person that he is not could I be wrong? Sure. But I, I sure as hell hope not because I want Montez to be as good as he can be. Jordan's a good player. Dude, Jordan's crazy, dude. Absolutely crazy. Last cut down on the strikeouts a lot last year when he arrived stateside. Yeah, I mean, that's like the big problem. Not big problem, but like the big worry is like the swing and miss in the big, big power hitters game. And if he can avoid that, that's great. Start having you, Hulu's only a few months older than you, older than Jackson Sherry. It just doesn't feel right. Yeah, no, it's it's bizarre. I don't want to bring up his name 
but a former pitcher for the Dodgers that is a left-handed starter and is out of baseball for bad reasons. Um, that was the first player that Colton was older than that had made his like MLB debut. Yeah, Colton is older than him. Yeah, Colton is older than him by a month. And like when we were in high school, it's like, oh my God, this guy's going to be like, he's, he shall not be named. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so Colton's a year older than me. Um, so I'm a 97. He's 96. And it's just like, <laughs> message retracted. Thank you, Axel. <laughs> um, it's like, whoa, like this guy's like making his debut or like whenever he's playing, like he's getting, he's going to like make the big leagues by this, like by this age. It was just crazy. It was crazy times. Bro streaming during WrestleMania? Yeah, because I don't give a rat's ass about wrestling. But to those that do, enjoy. Go go back and hang out with Seth Rollins versus whatever, dude. Go 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 live it up, Daydara. Go live it up, bro. Enjoy your WrestleMania. Realistically, do I think the Mariners will win a World Series before we die? Man, I I sure as hell hope so. <laughs> I hope I get to see a Mariners you know, championship in my lifetime, 26, you know, give or take like 50 years. I hope so. I'm forcing you to watch literally, literally not forcing. I'm not forcing you to do anything. Daydara. Can't believe they cut tail for Tramel. They did not cut tail for Tramel Donatello. Don't you lie to me. They got, they, he took Jason Hayward's spot. The World Series is fated to not happen. Is it written in the stars, Ian? Are we not allowed? At least Bryce Miller's OP. Y2K, dude. Miller was dicing it up yesterday. Very, very exciting that he was able to work in his splitter so, so effectively. There were a couple where he threw it, and I was like, ooh. To a better hitter, that's probably a bomb, I felt like. But I could be wrong. It just, like, there's a splitter that kind of hung out in the top, middle, like, middle top of the zone. And I was like, ooh. This is not great. Why does God hate us, Joe? <laughs> We're going to get real existential here, user error, if we really want to go that far. Thought T-Mobile hitting problems were fake, but they, they seem real. Fake news, T-Mobile park, park factor is not real. Fake news. Yeah, it's it's pretty real. On, as, as weird as it is that a park can affect the offensive side of the ball that much. And look on the other side, like the you know, Red Stadium is a good example, like Great American Ballpark. It's easy to hit there. Want the Mariners to be your pallbearer so they can let you down one last time? Reflect the sun. You've been working on that for a while, haven't you? The Seattle Mariners. Off topic, but Rangers or Astros? Rangers. Josh Naylor has a third brother called Miles. Does he? Is he also a baseball player? It's like Kyle. Kyle and Corey, they also have a brother named Justin. Fun fact. He's on the Stockton Ports team. Oh. Oh. Just the Naylor family pumping out baseball players, dude. Vikings and Mariners fan, God decided to give you the finger when he created you. He gave you his toughest battles. But, Skull, there's, only, there's, one, there's one person to do it. It's you. It's you, bro. Justin Seeger mention? Yo, Justin Seeger mention. Another baseball brother duo, Braden Bishop. His brother, Hunter Bishop. I wanted him to be so good for the Giants. So good. Never happened. Probably, I mean, he's done by now. He's, he's gone. But I wanted Hunter Bishop to be good so bad. <laughs> you miss Braden? I know Colton does, too. Yeah, that's all that you ever hear about Braden Bishop is nice guy. Seattle and Nebraska fan, eternal sports hell. What about Switch being a Titans fan? What about that? I don't know, like, that's always been, ever since I've kind of, like, gotten into Mariner's Twitter, like, circle, whatever, what do you want to call it? The fact that Switch is a Titans fan blows my mind. Like, I don't even really care about football that much, but that's just so funny to me. Twins won it in 87 and 91. Did you pick the short straw? Twins, I mean, 
don't know. Weird, weird thing for me, but like my favorite player growing up was Tory Hunter, not a Mariner. Maybe not favorite player, but like favorite player outside of anything Seattle ra- related was Tory Hunter, and it's just for no for no apparent reason. Always enjoyed watching him. Twins also have terrible ownership right now, for what it's worth. I mean, with terrible ownership, they still managed to field a pretty competitive roster the last couple of years. How are they doing so far? Are they doing okay? My Detroit Tigers are falling off. Lost two in a row to the freaking Athletics. To shame. Twins three and four. Yikes. Got rained out today. Yeah, no, I know, I know. No, like, the last, the, the pr- previously to this year, good, I'd say, as far as what they, as what they were bringing to the field. It's just, now, with the drop-in payrolls, it's a big yikes. Cleveland has no business being 7-2. What's going on in the AL Central? Uh, shenanigans. The White Sox being 1-8 and eight is right on, right, you know, right on cue, though, Ian. Right on cue. Um, who said that? Boomer. What midseason moves should Depoto make? I mean, it's always for a high leverage reliever. I feel like that teams will, who are in the postseason hunt, I guess, will make a move for. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen. Or maybe it's for a maybe more reliable mid rotation guy to push Brian, like on a one-year contract to push Brian Wu to help him with his innings limit could be an idea. The Seattle Mariners. Shout out Nikki Scarlotta, dude. Um, I think it'll depend on how the corner outfield's looking. If if there's still struggles with Ray Lee Canzone, like consistency, I wouldn't be surprised just a, a everyday guy to be acquired. So... The the normal stuff I would say, Boomer, as far as mid season moves, like some sort of pitcher and some sort of like it's either gonna be third base or corner outfield at that point. Who's gonna be selling though? I mean the White Sox should be selling. I doubt the Astros would would be selling, but you know, the Marlins could be selling. They're one and nine. It's a, it's very early, you know, we're ten games in to figure out who's selling. And there were plenty of teams last year around that time that were like so close in the race, whether or not they should sell or not. Like the Mariners found themselves in that weird, you know, he said, she said happenstance of like, who's selling? I'm not. We are. Like, it's, it was a very strange trade deadline last year. And had they played a little bit better ball before that, maybe they wouldn't have been selling and, you know, you'd still have Paul Seawald for whatever. I don't know. Jerry's walking for sure. Yeah, not having an extension there for Jerry and yeah, it's just you know, it'll be a weird next couple of months depending on how the team plays. Marlins definitely sell. Yeah, it's just I mean, one they're just horrendous right now. How do I have so much patience for this Mariners team? Um I don't know. They haven't really done much for me in my lifetime aside from like 2022. And so I'm just kind of used to it, I guess, of like, I don't say like being let down, but also like, I just would rather root positively for the team than have negative emotions. Like I can still have like negative emotions, like be like upset, but how is that going to, that won't affect, that won't change the team. That won't like allow the team to be better by me being frustrated them. Like voicing those fresh, like, not to say that people's voices can't be heard, but like, no, they won't care that I'm upset. So why not just like root happily, even if it's like not going great? Because what what other option do I have? It's either be angry and you know shout at the sky, or be hopeful. I'll be hopeful. It's just easier for me. Easier on my mental. 
taking solitude in the Astros and their third highest payroll being two and seven, the last place behind the A's call you bitter. No, dude, take every ounce of that that you can get. Reflect the sun. Take every single ounce that you can get. Cause right now there's not a lot of not a lot of fun things, baseball wise. If you're you know watching Seattle baseball, hasn't been entirely enjoyable. Had to turn the game off. Yeah, I mean, I got home from work and they were already losing two to six. I never even turned the game on, truthfully. You know, a little decompression day there, sour vanilla. A little decompression, smooches, bro. <laughs> you watched every game except yesterday's figures. Keep watch less games, Prima. Watch less games. Old Joe's yelling at the sky again. Why? Popping in and say, "Hey, busy day. What a rough game." Scrap. I appreciate you. You know, swinging by, saying was good. Yeah, rough game. Not great. Hopefully, your busy day has been an okay day at least, and that it you know goes well for you. Rojas has pitched in two of the three series. Rojas is coming for the team Cy Young. Guys, if we ignore eight runs, we're tied four to four. If we, yeah, if we ignore all of Emerson Hancock's eight earned runs to his ledger, we're tied. Maybe we win it, you know, in extras or something. It's possible. That's the copium that I'm going to ride it out with. That's the copium that I needed. Had the same thought driving back from Yakima, lost service, tuned into a three nothing lead. Figured you're the curse. <laughs> if you watch it, we're gonna lose. That's always tough. Of like, oh, for yesterday, yeah, yeah. That's always tough when you like get to the game and then bad stuff starts happening. It's like, well, I wanted to watch the game, but now I won't. Don't think it's a coincidence. <laughs> bad luck in, until the uniting of the jury to break your curse. Okay. Until what? What? What would it take? For Brandon Drury to allow that curse to break, do you think, Prima? If we ignore losses, we are undefeated. Blocking out the haters, Daydara. I, I, I see what you're going. I see what you're going with. Imagine how things would have turned differently if we retained Gino and Teo. I mean... I guess... I'm not living. I'm not. I don't know. I don't want to dwell on those moves. Like, I don't think there was there was a a chance that Teo was coming back with the money, and then obviously them wanting to move off of Gino just because salary strike, whatever. Like, yeah, they're playing well. I'm very happy that they're playing well for their respective teams, but. Would that would they have those same successes with the Mariners? Maybe not. No, no way to know. Trade Hancock and Urias for a true third baseman. Is this realistic? Um, I just don't think. I don't think either the guys Boomer have a lot of value. Like everyone knows that Emerson Hancock is probably at a, a number five around the league at best. Unfortunately, unless he figures out how to keep his velo after about. 40 pitches so like his value there for Hancock is just it's probably low especially after giving up eight runs today and Luis Urias yeah he's playing okay like he you know hit a home run had a clutch double in the first game his bat has looked okay defensively he's nothing special I just don't know if there's a lot of value there boomer unfortunately you lost it because three of your players got a rain delay that's tough dude I know Jose Ramirez for me in the league where it's a five point game between me and Tyler got rained out. So I, I hope I I hope Marcus Semien or just just whatever. It doesn't you know come back to bite me here. Way too early to be saying we regret letting Gino and Teo go. Yeah, it's I mean it's early. It's the beginning of the year. They could for all we know regress to, you know, sub two ten hitters again with uh, two hundred strikeouts. It it could happen. It's just we, we shall see. Saving it for the real season, 11 for 19. I mean, that the Bra that's what the Braves lineup do, though. Fun fact, Ross has already been better than Gino. Whoa! 
Just imagine if we had Gino and Rojas, though. Thoughts, accent, thoughts. Hey, Ian, you took a big lead over Colton today. Damn. 277? What happened? Nolan Gorman had a big day. Sale, Imanaga, Crochet. I mean, Hancock and Gibson are kind of yikes, but... Oh, and Colton didn't have, like, any pitching. He needs Blanco to throw another no-hitter, bro. <laughs> no, because Polanco? Correct. Rojas has a better chance of winning the Cy Young than Otani? True. And that's all that matters to me. Um, why do I think the main reason that Jorge Polanco has been striking out more than any year in his careers? Um, sample size? How many at-bats does Jorge Polanco have on the year? Is that right? 34 at-bats? I don't know if that's been logged on, the, on baseball reference. So he's probably at 38 at-bats. Yeah, I mean, he's striking out a 35% clip to compared to his last year at 25%. It's just sample size, dude. It's just sample size. Need the fantasy recap sneak peek? I'll run through it instead of doing a, a video for it. I'll run through it right now. See what see what's popping. Give me one sec. Don't ignore the camera. Ignore the camera right there, all right? Why is that not registering? There we go. And we'll small we'll shorten this guy up. Mariner Mojo Fantasy Baseball. I'm sorry. Axel, what are you what are you yelling at, bro? Who are you yelling at? Trident's up. Trident's up, Seth. Trident's up. Mariner Mojo Fantasy Baseball. If you are a member. You guys are in these some of these some of you guys are in these leagues. I absolutely stuck it to Dylan this week. Sorry, Dylan. 285 to 139. Chaboy went big time in this league, bro. Where is Colton? Where is he? He's gone, dude. Is that what you were yelling at? Is that what you wanted? We can say hi to Colton really quick. Really quick. Accent yelling to the void. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Beating Colton and Joan back-to-back -back weeks? Dude. Last week was close, Ian. Last week was close. It was because there was a black screen? Yeah, yeah, My bad, dog. Okay. So we're here. I beat Dylan by, by a lot. Skyhawks, Sky Dre, losing here to um HP LaserJet Pro. Like, what are we doing here? Huh? What's up, what Dorian? What's the big idea with with the name? All right. Marlins acquire Pete. So we spell Gabby Gonzalez. CJ Cole. Who are these names? Primo, what are you? What are you? What are you doing right now, Ian? I have Julio taking down Bryce Krispies. I'll showcase the, the previous week where he beat me. Um, Ligma Sigma. L taking down DJ Manny D here. Taking down Daydara. Poor guy. And then Accent coming out on top of Lucario. 197 to 154 there. Good for you, Accent. Starting the year 2-0. Oh. We'll go back to week one where I lost by like... 21 points. I was pissed. Just absolutely devastated that I lost to Ian there, but we move. We put up 285 this week. We're back. We're back on on the right track. We'll go to the second league where uh-oh. I'm losing. This is not a good sign. Who had a home run? Someone for the Rangers must have hit a home run. Semyon does not yep. Uh did who had a home run? Alvarez hit a home run. Oh, that's so unfortunate. So this week, this league, I'm 1-0, but I'll probably be 1-1 one one by the end of the day. Losing by three now to Tyler, which is unfortunate. 
Um, Colton's going to lose to Mike, Dave's Grand Salami. Colton's going to be 0-2. Kind of crazy. Rodents of usual size will move to 2-0, taking down the Sean Figgins super fans. Rainwater will get his first win, and then, unfortunately, Jay, Chaos Ball Mariner, Mendoza line is going to go fall to 0-2 probably with Onzilla. Tommy Malone enjoyers coming out on top there. Big, big from them. Huge. Huge. To get Burger be a top 10 prospect minimum? Whatever, dude. Let, let, let the people dream. Let the people dream, accent. As the pilot fan, you love Milwaukee and Seattle. Yeah, Pigray, you've been, you've been, you know, you've been steady rocking with the, the Brewers and the Mariners. I remember last year when Brewers came to town, you were commenting. I remember. 2-0 is huge. 2-0 is huge. You guys want to see the, the, the Mariners Fantasy Creator League that we're doing with Jake? I'll show you guys that one. Chaboy went, Chaboy went big money. Props to you, brother, and Seattle. I hope, I hope, you know, hopefully Seattle can figure it out here. What's up with my layout? Was that like that this whole time? That's so embarrassing. So, around the league here, we got a bunch of different matchups. I took on Jake. Jake is Ty Francis Baguette. Um, I beat Jake by about 300 points. 1,142 to 841. This is on fan tracks, so it's a lot different than ESPN Fantasy Baseball. Colton took down John Morosi's... Oh, who is this? Is this Lyle or TJ? This is Lyle. John Morosi's report. Colton is Jerry's budget ballers. Took down Lyle by 160. Jay's Trident loses to TJ from the Marine Layer podcast, 952 to 883. And then what was what was matchup of the week in the first week here? Too Mitch, Too Furious, Mariner Muse takes down the Couch GM by about 100 points. So this is the Mariner's Creator League. Um, earlier, in the, earlier in the week, Jake was talking some smack. He said that his team was selling, like, like his team needs to wake up, especially against Joe. It's an easy matchup. Little did he know I was going to be potentially the leading scorer in week one, Jake. So nice try, buddy. Nice try. Where did he say it? Jake goes, I'm about to become Frank the Tank. My whole fantasy team is selling. Especially against Joe, this should be light work. L. L Jake for doubting me. Absolutely tore it up in the Creator League this week. Not today. Not today. Joe, <laughs> if you go 0-2, you're gonna be pissed, bro. You're gonna get the you're gonna you might you're on track to get the the Discord role. You know, the worst team in each league is gonna get a, an exclusive Discord role. So Julio Lindor and Acuna have sold on your team hard. Dude, in one of the leagues, in the second league, someone dropped Lindor, and I picked him up. I claimed him on waivers. So I've got Lindor on my team now, which is exciting. It's, it's, it's an exciting time. Yeah, the Fantasy League 2. The, the league where I, I drafted... Freddie Freeman and Jose Ramirez as the first two picks. I now have Francisco Lindor as well. So, I don't think Dorian's in that one. I think it's, I think that's the other league. Accent. Batting like, oh, yeah, I mean, he's not batting. I mean, of course. Justifiably so, someone dropping him, but like, I'm all in. Let's Let's see who dropped him. I want to see the move that caused him to get dropped. Do I know how to read? I 
I don't know how to read. Let's see. <laughs> I want I want people to guess. So Dave's Grand Salami, Mike, Mike E. Dropped Francisco Lindor for an outfielder. Prima, yeah. Shortstop for the Mets. Get together. Mike Soroka? No. I'm all in. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Ian Happ? No. Well, he is an outfielder. Wyatt Langford? No. Lindor was still in Cleveland? No, sir. He plays in the NL Central. Ian Happ is the... Uh, Ian Happ and, I guess, Will Benson. Both okay guesses. Plays in the NL Central. An outfielder. The best team in the Central. Right now, record-wise. Took down the Orioles again today. Nope, not Freilich. The accent, you are correct. Francisco Lindor was dropped for Connor Joe. Of the Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> oh, sure, he's he's playing well, but dropping Lindor for Connor Joe is crazy. That's crazy. He has J.P. Crawford as his shortstop right now, which is hilarious to think about. Just drop J.P. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Connor Joe's an all-star this year? That's fine. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'd still rather take Francisco Lindor. Yeah, I, Bo Bichette's been struggling for me, so I picked up O'Neal Cruz and started him for a day, and then I saw that Lindor was on waivers, so I was like, oh, bet. Let me pick up Lindor if I'm able to, and I did. So, guess your favorite player? Brandon Drury. Calling it a day. Calling it a day. Well, I appreciate everyone hanging out in this, you know, pretty pretty poor Mariners baseball day. But drop you were tempted to drop Lindor instead of Cruz? Interesting. Um Galoff cannot win rookie of the year. Zach Jaloff. He cannot win rookie of the year. He exceeded his limits last year, accent. Just, you know, throwing it out there. Nope? What do you mean, nope? Exceeded rookie limits during 2023 season. I'm looking at it right now on reference. I was looking at it, looking at it like two weeks ago. Stop, stop disrespecting the narrative. Bro, I, I want, I would, like, Colt and I pick our awards every year before the season starts. I had him as my pick and then I was like shit I can't cuz he's unable to <laughs> As a man who loves JP I've only experienced pain in the last 10 games Nick hopefully JP turns it around hopefully that's something that he's able to get back on track I'm sure no one is you know more mad at, at JP Crawford than himself for the, how he's been play whoa for how he's been playing so you're not you're not wrong how else should you rile me up okay what are you, 90? Who says riled up anymore? Am I a dog? Getting the dogs all riled up? Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. Hope the whole damn team turns it around. You know, Ian, that too. Not just one guy. The whole, the, the whole cohesive unit, especially after today, was not great. But, as I was saying, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, chatting it up, you know, you know, bringing some joy into my day hypothetically when the mariners work the blue jays work so so anyways i'm gonna get out of here um obviously the podcast tomorrow very exciting things if you guys haven't and you're a member we uploaded the members only video for the weekend on saturday is a head-to-head and will be the show and he, I am I implore you guys to go check it out because it was a lot of fun for Colton and I to play. And uh yeah. See you guys next time.
if there's a, another win for a post game stream, maybe I won't be doing homework next time. Maybe I won't be doing homework. People that were clowning me in last night's stream for doing homework. I'm sorry that I'm trying to finish my education. Okay. My bad. My bad guys. All right. And I'm a grown ass man. Embarrassing. Trust me. No one's more embarrassed to be doing homework at 26 than me. Daydara. Okay, then me. I would have loved to finish the degree when I was supposed to way back when. But life happens, Daydara. Life happens. All right.